Welcome back, everybody, to Junior Gold. Mike Flanagan and Karen Doran Ballard here with you as we've got the U15 boys and girls coming up for you here on Bowl TV. Those of you that are watching on YouTube and Facebook, thank you for joining us for the pregame show. You can head over to Bowl TV to watch the entire step ladder along with the U18 here today. We just came off a couple awesome shows, Carolyn. There's mm -hmm. a lot of energy here in the building. we got a big crowd, and we've got a great show in store here. Absolutely. It's nice to see all the young talent, especially here at Junior Gold, where you see everybody from all over the country. And we start to learn about where are they getting all this experience? I mean, because a lot of these kids, they're hitting the lanes, and they're on this TV pair, and they're throwing it like they've been doing it for 20 years. Yeah, we just came off a show that I can't believe how great the 12 year olds are it was mm -hmm. incredible and they made some ball changes i mean they were making ball changes like i learned to make in my first year out on tour and got up and made some clutch shots and some clutch spares as we saw a three six nine ten being made for the mm -hmm. championship or to force someone to mark i mean that's definitely not the spare you want to be shooting at to force somebody into a you know a good shot yeah, definitely. So let's go ahead and talk about who we're going to have coming up here okay. today. The, all the players have worked so hard to get here at Junior Gold. They'll be bowling on their eighth pattern today. Such a test at Junior Gold. Yes, absolutely. And again, we talk about it um, every time we have one of the shows, but limited to five bowling balls also. So think about that just for a second. Eight patterns but only five bowling balls. And if you use a spare ball, you really only have four. So not only are the patterns challenging, but making the right decisions on how to prepare your equipment for each round is even more challenging. Absolutely. So let's uh, let's go over our roster here today. The number three seed, Kayla Starr. She's from Crofton, Maryland. She'll be on our opening match. And she's taking on Sydney Bone and the whole Bone family's here from Jackson, New Jersey. Both girls are very talented, and I think they might be getting out of the U15 division next year, if I'm not mistaken, but talented. And why, why I say that is they are no stranger to being under the, the limelight. Kayla, very, um, very unique in mm -hmm. the fact of it's, it's, it's quite unique about Kayla, and I'm going to tell you why. She's very mature for her age and has bowled so well, then hit a very small slump. And I remember talking to her and saying, you know, I thought you'd bowl a little bit better this, not here, but at one of the events. And she says, you know, I'm in a little bit of a slump, but she put everything in perspective. And I went, oh my God, you're so much more mature for your age. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Just because you expect everybody to just go, oh, okay, I'm just going to bowl bad. So I, I predict that we're going to see her making some good shots and some good decisions. Yet Sydney Bone has worked very hard at becoming the bowler she is today. You know, she was not bowling while her brothers were. She was the last one to decide that she wanted to hit the lanes, and she has caught up to her two bigger brothers. Yeah, everybody's made a show in the Bone family, yep. it seems like. And our number one seed is Savannah Talon. She's from Concord, North Carolina, and mm -hmm. she has to actually be defeated twice as a true double elimination bracket. Absolutely. Coming from a great bowling mecca, um, she has an great coaching and again another talented young lady who's out here showing why shot making and spares were very important that was her game plan absolutely so if you're watching on youtube and on facebook make sure you join us over on bowl tv and if you're watching on bowl tv we're going to have the coverage coming up for you here in just a few moments right here from indianapolis 2021 junior gold championships Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to the 2021 Junior Gold Championships. I'm Mike Flanagan, joined by Carolyn Doran Ballard here, calling the action for you today. And we've got our U15 girls in store for you, followed by the U15 boys, Carolyn. Yes, it's going to be a fantastic show. We have a lot of talent. Um, one of the things I like to always emphasize is, you know, as we see this young talent, it just keeps getting better and better, younger and younger. I mean, the... All three of these girls are no stranger to the spotlight of a TV show or a live stream. They come from a talented area. They come from coaching. And it's, it's just they're, you're going to see good shot making. You're going to see a good foundation and good leverage at the line, which I love talking about because this right here, U15, is showing you that with all of those traits, you could become a very good bowler. And they've been here in Indianapolis for an entire week, bowling across so many different patterns. They're going to see their eighth pattern here today on the show. The first match, we're going to have Kayla Starr, number three seed, taking on Sydney Bone. And the Bone, that is the Bone family. That is the familiar name you're all familiar with, Sydney Bone. Uh, Parker and Leslie's daughter made the show here. And then our number one seed is Savannah Talon. So that's what we have in store for you here today on the show. It's going to be interesting, too. Um, I, I love that 
Sydney has so much support because she was the last one to really pick up the game. I mean, she was a dancer. She loved doing that. And then all of a sudden, I remember, because I remember the story, Parker telling me, and she said, uh, he said, you know, she's finally said, hey, I want a ball. And she was kind of, she was okay. You know, she really wasn't into it because it was all about her brothers, right? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, he said, one day she said to him, I really want to get better. And he took her and they made a practice plan and what days they would go. And here now you're seeing the results of all of her, uh, all of her hard work. Kayla Starr is another product of the Will Clark, right? Jillian Martin helps with her. Um, so again, good coaching. Another reason to please in your area, if you're seeking out anything, when you want to learn to change your game or get to that next level, seek out a good coach. Yeah, seek out a good coach. Will Clark, he, he's been busy here yes, uh, yes, at he Junior has. Gold. He's, he's got quite a following there, a lot of folks that he works with. And then coming up uh, on tap after this step ladder final that we have, we'll have the U15 boys where Landon Jordan is our number one seed, Ethan Caruso our number two seed, and Trevor Ashby our number three seed. The interesting thing about that match, not to get too far ahead of ourselves, is Landon and Ethan. They actually battle it out all the times in the Chicagoland area. So we've got that on tap for you, but we get things started here in just a few moments with our number one match, our opening match, number three seed, Kayla Starr taking on Sydney Bone. Again, our tournament leader, Savannah Talon. She'll have to be defeated twice today as it's a true double elimination match play format. Which I love. And you know what? We've ha we had our first two-gamer in the U12 division. We did. We D just came off that show. Exactly. That's the first one because everybody's just been, the leader has just been taking charge. So we'll see how it happens. You know, and, and it's funny when you watch those shows, um, it's amazing how, again, we saw it with Kai, they, big game, big game that first game in the championship, and then all of a sudden it went down to the 10th frame. So it's, it's, it's all about the pressure and how you handle it and um, making those shots when they count. So well, I'm looking forward to another great match. Great participation here at Junior Gold in the U15 Girls Division. We had 298 athletes take to the lanes. We cut down to 43 for the advancers round, 28 for the next advancers round, and then down to 16 for the double elimination match play bracket. And over on the boys' side, 630 entries. We cut down to 90, then we went to 56, and we finished with 16 in our match play bracket. And through all the match play, through the winner's bracket and the elimination bracket, they found their way to our TV show here today. The top three, the best of the best in the U15 divisions. Absolutely. And it was a grueling however many games. I mean, at one point you stopped counting. Remember how I said eight lane conditions, seven lane conditions, whatever it be. It just seemed like one day ran into the other. And again, very tough days. And now we begin our U15 girls show here for the 2021 Junior Gold Championships. Our first competitor from Jackson, New Jersey, Sydney Bone. Sydney being the number two seed, she has elected to start the match on the left lane. And I like that decision because this pair has been used this pair has been used in the matches, and I think the left lane has been the troublesome lane. And we see here, Sydney makes a great shot, playing very straight. And the 7-8 board comes in very light and leaves the 7-10, but I like her angles. Remember, we talked about that also. Junior gold, you want to keep your angles somewhat straight, hit the pocket, make your spares, and, and that was a good shot. From Crofton, Maryland, Kayla Starr. Sydney is 15, Kayla is 14. Kayla started bowling at age four. You'll see with Kayla, she's gonna be a little bit further left than Sydney. She has a little bit more axis rotation. Right there, getting it out to about eight, nine, 
by that tracer, which I love because at least we can see where they're playing on the lane, lane or where they're trying to get their ball to. Um, using a little bit more of an aggressive ball that's going to hook in the middle part of the lane, but still be smooth off the pattern, which is what you're looking for. Leaves the 3-9. See Coach Will Clark back there. And it's patriotic colors there. <laughs> Jillian Martin in the background. A lot of celebrities in here. Caitlin Abagonia. Ken and Kathy Keegan from I Am Bowling, powered by Logo Infusion. Oh, I see a celebrity as well. Your daughter. Oh my. <laughs> That's one of those spares that you really don't want to have to shoot at, but she covered it like a champ. So Sydney makes a great opening shot. Leaves the 7-10 unfortunate break there. We'll see how she can attack this right lane. See if she can get back, get something going here. Another great shot. Leaves the 4-pin. She's got a good look on both lanes. Yep, and even got that one in just a little bit. A little left off her hand, but I think this right lane has just a little bit of hold, and you can do parallel moves. It's the left lane where the bigger moves need to be made and you actually need just a little bit of angle in the front. Just just a little bit. I don't mean you throw it to the right, but just a little bit of angle in the front. Saw the shot there of the entire Bone family and also related to the Kents. Um, says here, Sid's favorite bowler is Doug Kent and there's an inside joke with that. Easy to do after leaving a 7-10, trying to force it in the pocket. Maybe a little left to target here, Carolyn? A little left to target and a little slow. Sydney has very good ball speed, and it seems as if she's just throwing it just a little bit slower than normal. And, of course, first couple shots on TV, you know, just trying to get the jitters out. But I think if she just makes a parallel move to the left, a little bit of a move, uh, the parallel move on the right lane, and then a bigger move on the left lane, it just keeps up her ball speed. She should have a good reaction. Kayla here is joined by her mom and her dad. Her mom, Joanna, her dad, Ed, is here. Made the trip with her. Supports her at every event. You can see Kayla. Look at that knee bend and leverage. There is that spot down lane you want to get your ball to around that 8-9 area. But again, one of the things you want to notice is they're not using bowling balls that make that hockey, hockey stick turn, right? They're, they're more smooth off the break point, very controllable, very manageable. Controlled reaction off the spot down lane. Beautiful shot. And if she looks familiar to those of you that tune into Bowl TV, she competed in a PWBA event. She crossed with Deandra Asbady, and that is her favorite bowler. She said, stay calm, be you. And she loved crossing with Deandra Asbady. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's the first strike for Sid. Definitely a lot more aggressive on that shot, and everything was perfect. Her lines, everything. That was, that is what she needs to do: is maintain that leverage and that ball speed. Another seven ten on the left lane. She made the move, but right here, as you can see, just gets it a little right and doesn't quite get up there. I gotta tell you, I like where she's at. I think she just needs to get around it a little bit, but definitely stay in that spot. Yeah, so she'll have to sit down and think about things a little bit. She also told me that she likes to spend her, her free time at the beach, lets her be very calm and relaxed, and when things don't go well on the lanes, she likes to pretend she's at the beach. 
come and relax to 15. What do you think? <laughs> we got the sleeper pin behind, the 9 with the 3, 6, 10. Gets this one a little left. As you can see, it doesn't get to the 8, 9 area. Gets it a little left around 10, 11. Goes to the nose. Again, we talk about flat patterns, right? When they're tough, there's very little wiggle room to the right and to the left. So you have to find where you feel you can hit the head pin the most consistent. That's tough to leave the six chopping it that way. Look pretty good off her hand. And the ball just picks up right there. And that is hard to do that. Actually, usually just chop the two straight back. The pattern not released to the players. They'll be released after the event. So we don't know the length of the pattern. Great shot right there. Way to bounce back. Right here. Ball gets to the top and just drops down, keeps that left shoulder very still in front of the right. Open hand, love it. Looks pretty good. Splits the 8-9. Great comeback shot by Sydney. This right lane has been everybody's favorite lane. It's been the most consistent transition has been very you know very very easy for all the players no matter how you threw it it's the left lane that has definitely given everyone just a little bit of a problem I had to talk to I had a chance to talk to the players ahead of time and she goes to St. John Vianney High School I also went to a St. John Vianney High School oh, mine you? in St. Louis hers in New Jersey oh my gosh I just said oh my gosh oh huh this looked like a great shot off her hand, but just a little bit tighter down the lane, and she pays full penalty three shots, you know, on that left lane. That's that's just, I don't know what to say, really. I'm, I'm kind of speechless on that one. I don't want to date ourselves, but you and I have been around the game quite a long time, and we've watched a lot of bowling. I cannot remember any time where someone has left three seven ten splits on the same lane yeah, on I, a television or live stream produced production. Right, and I, I mean, honestly, she, I, the lane is definitely a little bit tighter in the back because it hooks so much earlier in the front. So, you know, the move, again, left to right, you want to be very subtle. Maybe it's just a little bit of speed control. Another great shot by Kayla. Comes off the bench, very aggressive. Those great fundamentals that you talk about. Right there. You can see it when she bends the knee. Wait, here's the key too, waiting till the pins, ball goes through the pins before they get up from their shot. That's right, about a 22 pin lead here now for Kayla. When we talk about these younger ladies, um, you can even see they're going through their breathing technique. They're taking their time. They have a pre-shot routine. They're becoming very, uh, they're just, they're more prepared than I think of, you know, even five years ago because because of all the education, all of the coaching. So they're, again, I always say they're, they're ahead of their time. Absolutely. So actually 39 pins, the advantage for Kayla Starr through seven frames. Spare working for Starr in the eighth. Well, there's I think, a break. I think they owe her. I, I think they owe her one. <laughs> I think so as well. <laughs> Definitely missed left here, as you can see. I think she knew it. But honestly, after her last three shots on the left lane, or you know, the three shots on the left lane, she deserves a little break. Carolyn Sid is wearing two necklaces. You may see one is uh, a tribute to 
uh, her uncle A, Andy, who passed away in December, and a sunflower for her grandmother, who passed away in March. Oh, my gosh. Look at the leaf. At this point, it's comical. I mean, I mean, really, what do you do? I mean, that is the... I have to look at it again. What, what did she leave? She left the 3, 6, 9, 10, but with... Is it the 2-pin? The 4-pin. The 3, 4, 6, 9, 10. There's something you leave every day. That's probably one of the most interesting five outs I've ever seen. Well, yeah. yeah. And I, I mean, she, her, her score is not showing, but she really didn't pull that bad of a game. No, she I, hasn't. It's unbelievable. Kayla, it's important for her to bowl within herself here because she's got more business to take care of. That one, to me, looked a little in, but it looked like she got around it a little bit Yeah, more. a little bit. Um, but see, still got it still out to that 8-9 eight, eight, area, which is very crucial. That's, that seems to be the, the, the part of the lane where if you get your ball to feed right to that part, it really has come off, off the pattern very nicely. And she did, but she's got that open hand, kind of like Jillian Martin, right? A little bit of a trait there. And a crossover strike for good measure. Now, because this left lane is the tricky lane, you know what I would be doing on this shot. I'd be changing balls as he is handing her a bowling ball. I'd be changing balls and moving. Good advice, and that's exactly what she is going to do. Looks like a cleaner ball. More controllable. So the final score for Kayla Starr is two. Will be two oh what do you what do you think? Two oh nine? You gonna give her this spare? No, I think she's gonna throw another ball to try a strike shot. Okay. So we may have none. <laughs> what would you do here? I would try another ball. Because okay. that lay, if, if you watch any of the previous matches on the pair, do you know, I, I would be paying attention to that left lane, knowing that's going to be the lane that you need to get lined up on because I'm good on the right lane. And you may go back to throwing one ball on one lane, you know, one ball on the other. So you have to make that decision because she's bowling for a title. So 209, the final score, and Sid's going to finish up here. She can still get to 152. How about a couple of strikes here, Sid, just to, just to save some face ball? here? Maybe. Oh, oh, my. <laughs> I don't Sydney, know. Sydney had a rough time of it this game. She really did. I don't know if you heard the crowd, but they said, what do you say, ball, all in unison? And that's what, that's what you get, a solid she, eight. She definitely did not shoot a 140 game, No, she way. did not. At least she's having a great time. With well, this. there's nothing you can really do about it. I mean, that's when you look up and you go, I mean, I threw the shots that I thought I needed to throw. She marks in those frames. It changes the game. So, very interesting. Oh. Well, what a, what a great week for the Bone family here, and they're not done yet. We're going to see Brandon coming up a little bit later today in our U18 show. Let's give a round of applause to our match one winner, Kayla Starr. And our third place finisher in the U15 Bone Division, Sydney Bone. So Kayla Starr advances. Sydney Bone, guess what, Carolyn? You get to talk to her here in just a couple minutes. Okay, looking forward to it. Our last match here for the U15 Girls Division in just one moment. Give us a few minutes to get set up and ready to go.
on over here, Sydney. All right, you ready? Oh God. Okay. I am here with Sydney Bone, who just finished third in the U15 girls division. And Sydney, look, I know you're laughing, and we had a good time, and I kept going like this when you threw a shot. Um, tell us a little bit about that left lane. All right, so the left lane was, like, tough. I couldn't hit my mark enough, and I didn't know what ball to throw. And then when it came to picking lanes, I was like, I certainly want to finish on the right lane because I know I can hit my mark. I know I can throw a good shot. That left lane was just tough. It was like I hit the pocket, 7-10, 7-10, and then I miss it left, goes high, miss it right, doesn't hook back. So I don't even know. <laughs> I really didn't think your shots on the left lane were that bad, and I thought you made a little bit of a move on the second time when you left the second 7-10. So really, I don't think it was all you, so don't, don't take it like that. Um, what did you do to prepare for junior gold this year? Um, I was practicing. But I certainly didn't practice enough. Like, you know, my mom and dad, they really pushed me to practice. And I was just like, I don't want to practice. I don't want to practice. And I know that sounds bad for an interview. No, it's okay. But, like, the last day that we left before the summer, I went to Howell Lanes, my home bowling center. And I had Mike Ormsby, the Mr. Lane guy, we call him. Mm -hmm. And he set up spares. I could you not. I probably made five out of 30 spares that he set up. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, I'm not ready for the summer. And then Louisville, that's why I seen Louisville happen, and I made all my or a lot of my spares. So I was like, I'm feeling pretty good about junior gold. Okay, that was awesome because you bowled very well all week. Okay, so one more question: You were the last to decide to hit the lanes, and I talked about this a little bit. Your brothers always bowled; you did dancing. So what changed? Well, I had like a mishap in dance, and I'm not going to share it, okay. but <laughs> um, it was kind of embarrassing. So I was like. I don't think I want to do dance anymore. And it was in August, right after we had just been to Junior Gold. And I was like bored of watching just bowling. And I was like, hey, I can try this. Let me try it. Well, I think you made the right decision. And I look forward to watching you on TV again. Thank so you. great week. Here you go. Another bone on TV. Back to you, Mike. Great interview. Great person, Sydney Bone. Folks, coming up next, we've got Kayla Starr, number three seed, is going to take on our number one seed, Savannah Talon. But before we do that, we've got a word from our partners. Welcome back, everybody. Mike and Carolyn back with you. We've got our championship match coming up, Carolyn. Yes, it's going to be very interesting. Kayla, again, tried a couple of bowling balls on that left lane right after the first shot. I think that was a smart move because that left lane is the lane that has been tough in a lot of the matches and it's come down to the 10th frame. So I thought that was a smart move on her part and I think she's feeling a little more comfortable on that left lane. So Savannah's gonna have to come out strong in the beginning or I think Kayla's going to take that first game, forcing it to the second game. Yeah, she's got a nice look on the lanes for sure. Was able to get comfortable, create a little bit of room there going left to right on the right lane. But you're, you're right, this left lane has just been the tricky lane for every single bowler we've seen come through this championship pair here at Expo Bowl. Yeah, and you know what? It, it doesn't matter whether you were left-handed or right-handed. It became tricky for both. I was also talking to Nick Hoagland, who designs all the patterns here and makes sure that the lanes are in tip-top shape. After the show that we had last week, they replaced one of the kickbacks on the left lane, just to give you a little inside oh, scoop behind okay. the scenes here. <laughs> behind the scenes. Do you have video of that? I don't. <laughs> I take his word for it. So we have, you know, we've seen eight different patterns here. Yes. As we talked about qualifying, there were four game qualifying blocks, four of them across four different patterns, then five games in each advancers round, two more patterns. And then we saw the seventh pattern in all of match play, which has been known to be the real tough one. And then here on TV, another tough pattern, not quite as hard as pattern seven, but eight patterns, only five bowling balls being able to be checked in. A true test. Now a crowd, and we're down the championship match. I totally agree with you. And I have to tell you, though, that seventh pattern, yes, was tough. I think there were two in the middle that were tough. And I don't think the TV pair, unless you figure it out, the TV pair is tough as well. 
It is tough. It's a tough pair, and thanks to Andrew down lane getting our camera shots for us, you can see we've got a ton of people here. We've got people standing on, on bar stools in the back. Here we go. Time for introductions. Needing to win two games to become your U15 girls champion. From Crofton, Maryland, Kayla Starr. Okay, interesting here. Savannah elects for Kayla to start the match on the left lane. Which means she's going to finish on the right lane, which I think is her better lane. Opening shot, championship match. Went back to the ball she was using and moved just a little bit deeper. And your top seat from Concord, North Carolina, Savannah Talon. Savannah Talon, 15 years old, Concord, North Carolina. Bowls out of spare time in Huntersville, North Carolina. She's been bowling for 10 years. A little high on the first shot. Using that rosin. Definitely got the ball around that 10-11 area. As we've been seeing some of the players are moving a little left, doing the 13 to 8, 9, making that smooth motion. <coughs> Covers it up. She's here with her mom, Jane, her dad, Matt, her little brother, Michael. And I have to say, there's someone watching at home right now that she wanted to give a very special shout out to. Bowls League with her, even. The whole family Bowls League together wants to send a shout-out and a hello to Grandma Pat watching. So, Grandma, she thinks the world of you. She told me great things about you and her experiences with you on the lanes. We've seen some Brooklyns on that lane over the last couple of days. Inside a target here, Carolyn. Way inside, needs to get it just a little bit further right down lane, as we've seen out of all of the players. You have to have that spot down lane to get it to, however you need to feed it, and allow that ball to be smooth off of it. Controlling the pocket, that is the key to this week. Wow, that ball got back from an extremely, <coughs> extremely fur to the right there. But with her softer ball speed, that ball was able to make it to the pocket. One other thing Kayla's pretty good at is her normal ball speed is a little bit harder. She has fast feet. She creates ball speed naturally. But when she has to slow it down, she's pretty good at it, and also slowing it down and getting, it, get her, getting around it. If you've been watching Junior Gold for the last few years, you may also recognize Kayla because she finished fourth in Junior Gold, U12 2019, just missed the show, had a split in the 10th, and this show is a bit of redemption for her. She told me. Oh. High flush. Everybody was yelling push, but she made the move. She's playing deeper. And here you'll see right there, she has been rock solid on getting it to the tracer, right? Right to the right of the tracer, that 8 9 area. I'm telling you, every time she just floats it to that spot, it's been right in the pocket. Much better shot by Savannah. And we're talking about the same 12. spot. There you go, right? 12 out to about 8, right? Yep. So, again, the break point or down lane is the same on each lane. It's just from what point, starting point. And obviously we've seen on this left lane, you definitely need to be deeper. Oh, another good shot. Just leaves the four. 
Very good shot. Look at that left arm stay in front until just as that arm drops through. Also great leverage. And the other thing, look at the follow through on these girls. It's just complete. You know what I mean? There's no stopping halfway. It's all the way through. Goes past the four pin, goes hard and straight at her spare, but an error there in the 477 now in the fourth. Got an opportunity for Kayla to step up here, fourth and fifth. Looking for a double here in the fourth. Take advantage of that open. A lot of people yelling hook for that one. I think Kayla is creating her own area. A little bit softer with it. You're right, that gets out to what about the eight, um, five board, wow. Coming back and you know what? Great example, Don't the strikes don't have to be high flush. Just tickle that head pin the right way. Great results. Another call out for a push there. Again, left lane. Definitely got this one a little bit further left. Goes to the nose, and again, that left lane has very little mistake area. She high flushed the last one on that lane. But, but you know, again, we, you know, we keep talking about, you could, now for her, she could have let that ball go, she could have let that ball go and feel like she threw it good, right? Because mm -hmm. sometimes, we don't see what happens as we're, you know, watching, right? But with the result that she got, she has to decide whether it was her or the lane and then make the move if necessary. And if not, just concentrate on getting back to making good shots. Eight pen advantage right now. Beautiful shot, a little bit of a straighter line to the pocket. Very good shot by Savannah, and I like straighter. Takes, takes the pattern out of play. You're not at the mercy of making sure that your ball is hooking all of the time where it needs to, keeping it very simple. We've got a three pin match here through five frames. If you're just joining us here on Bowl TV, welcome. Championship match, U15 girls. Mixes them up, shoots she, the seven down. She yelled at that one too. She yelled, come on. Again, played it a little bit straighter and got the light hit. And again, this is another thing you notice when you are tougher patterns. Just because the ball hit light doesn't mean you have to move. Just keep hitting the pocket and filling frames. She's talking to mom and dad, Jane and Matt back there support staff. That ball almost made it back. Almost, I mean, I'm telling you, again, I, I mentioned she can soften up her ball speed, but look how far right she gets that ball out to about the four, four board down lane. And it, you're right, it almost came back, hitting very light, only leaving the two pin. Very, very easy spare. Okay. Savannah back home likes to spend a lot of time uh, with her family. Saw her back there talking to her parents. They told me that they like to play board games together and currently right now they've been playing Exploding kittens. <laughs> Not familiar with it. <laughs> Me neither. Back to Kayla. <laughs> Boom, there we go. Much better shot. Just love her game. I really do. It, it's so simple start to finish, right? We talk about that all the time. I mean, you can only control 
what you can control before you let go of the ball, right? And just keep it simple. She's got a little room there, it looks like. Very aggressive shot. Good knee bend. Look at the leverage. She gets the ball right off her hand a little bit more. Doesn't have as much axis rotation as Kayla or not using it right now. A little bit more behind the ball, creating even a smoother motion and kicking out the 10. Max score for Kayla Starr, 234. Max score for Savannah, 257. Just lost this one at the bottom, you can tell. Wasn't able to catch it, just a little quick. But she got a break and left the one two. A little neck adjustment there. All right, covers the spare. Let's take a look at the scoreboard here. Max score now 235 for Savannah. 234 for Kayla Starr. Oh, I hope it goes down to the 10th frame. Me too. I always wish that on people who are bowling on TV, except for when it was me. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. You just knew that ball was going to walk into the pocket. You could see it off her hand. There's nothing else to say about that shot except this one. Perfect. Do you know who she looks at like from the back when she follows through? Oh, here's another question. See, I say, who does it look like? Where's Rob Gotch? Well, I'm going to I'm, I'm say Danielle McEwen. Yes. Did Very I get good. one? You got that All one. All right, I'm one, I'm, I'm one for two yeah. now. Yep, you're one for two. I should have got the Buttruff one on the last show. Go back and watch that one, folks. <laughs> Carolyn got me pretty good. So here we go, foundation frame here in the ninth. Can put a lot of pressure on her opponent. Come on. Come on. We saw this hit a lot during junior gold, uh, all the matches that I watched right here. This does not look like a bad shot. Maybe just a little bit to the left of where she was getting it down lane and going just a little high. And instead of leaving the four seven, it's the four seven ten. Throwing that reactive resin bowling ball, trying to flatten out the hand. Never easy going straight up the left side of the lane. No, but she need to get two pins there. So max score now for Kayla Starr, one sixty or one ninety five. She has one sixty five in the ninth. Possible 235 here for Savannah. So Savannah has a chance to go up here and win. And disaster strikes in the ninth. Four, six, seven, ten. 10. What right. happened here? Definitely a little left of target, as you can see. And the ball just snaps right at the end leaving the big four. This is one of those matches again. No, you take it. No, I'll take it. You take it. I'll take it. Well, you wanted it to come down to the 10th frame here, so let's, yep. let's figure this out. 195, mm -hmm. max score for Kayla. 209 for Savannah. So Savannah needs to get to 196 to lock her out. So that's a mark Correct. and seven. I was just gonna say a mark and count, but the mark is the first part of the winning combination. And this is no gimme. This is not a give me. And she needs to go for it because she does, if she doesn't win this game, she has another opportunity to win. So she has to give this every shot possible of making this spare. This is the spare of her young career right here. So she opens the door 
for Kayla Starr. 187, the number posted on the board, which means Kayla Starr has a step up in the 10th frame, deliver a double and three pins. Correct. To force another game. Anything less, Savannah, Talon is our champion. And this is her better lane. She's been rock solid on this right lane, one shot at a time. Well, you hear the crowd. Great shot, gets that one even a little bit right. And that was almost a half pocket high flush. But again, see how that 10 just kicked backs? Kick backs, kick back. What do you call it? Kicked back. Off the sidewall. So here we go, must strike, must strike on this ball. Looks pretty good. good. The light mixer shakes them up and she gets the double. You can see the sense of relief on her face. Great shot. Got this one actually even a little in, which means now she's got some area. Told you this was her good lane, and she has figured out the left lane. She is going to be tough to beat. I love that reaction after the shot. Woo. Well, important, stay behind the foul line. Mm -hmm. Often you'll see a player go hard and straight down the middle in this sort of case, but looks like she's just going to throw a strike ball. And that's enough to force another game in this true double elimination match play bracket here at Junior Gold. We've got overtime. 193, 187, the final score. Open frame in the 10th. You can see Savannah is really disgusted with what happened there at the end of the match. We saw that in the U12 match. Kai needing a mark, right? Just in to win because he was forced into to having to need that mark. So here we are. The U15 Girls Championship title. And I, I think it's it's anybody's match here. I mean, it's it's a coin flip at this point. It is. Why isn't I'm sipping something every time we come back on camera? JT's laughing. He does it on That's purpose. That's because JT's your guy. What is your happening guy. here? Yeah. That's what um, it is. Um, and now I'm sipping uh, an Arnold Palmer because I got a little tickle in my throat. So first it was coffee, now it's an Arnold Palmer. But I do think it's going to be a better match. I think Savannah From now Concord. feels a little more comfortable with her environment North and Carolina. the lanes. Sorry, so it's going to be a lot closer. Savannah Taylon. All right, Savannah. Now she's got an opportunity to relax here. She's had a game. She's had a game now. Now she's got to execute here. She's going to finish on the right lane this time. A little bit slow, left of target, but again, she was sitting on the, the bench there. She's been sitting a while. She needs to pick up the spare and regroup and just come out with some aggressive shots. All right, spare starts the match. And from Crofton, Maryland, Kayla Starr. All right, here's Kayla. She's smiling. She's got to feel good after delivering that double in the 10th frame coming off the last match. A lot of momentum for her. She starts right where she left off. She is chasing this pattern left, 
like you are supposed to, keeping the ball nice and smooth off of the break point. She uh, looks very confident. Yeah, she I was looks just going to say that. I was just going to say she looks like she's feeling it. Correct. She's in the zone. You know, the question is, can she get that ball to the spot on the left lane? It looks like one or two boards right of the tracer, right amount of speed, right amount of mm -hmm. touch. Get it to read off the end of the pattern. Just left to where she needed that ball to get to. Yep, you can see it never gets, I mean, it just barely gets to about, I don't I couldn't even tell. I couldn't tell. It was quick. And she will have to finish on that lane. And again, remember, every time they bowl, you know, transition is happening to the lanes. So that's one of those where I know I think she missed a little left, was a little slow. So hey, do I keep my ball speed up and just keep doing what I'm doing or do I need to make the move? Because, again, you wanted to make simple moves on the patterns because they were so tough. You didn't want to give up the pocket. Okay, now Savannah fighting a little ball reaction here. Playing a little too direct. Missed in too, so again, I think it's time for a move. Lanes could be breaking down. We're under the lights. There's a lot of factors that go into it. Yeah, she, she came in high on that lane uh, at the end of the last game, so now a couple of shots in a row high on that lane, but she is clean through two frames. And while we have a second, while she's waiting for her ball um, or getting ready to do her pre-shot routine, Kira Maxim, Caitlin Stahl, we have Kayla Starr on the show, Sharice uh, Graham. That's U15 division, just to mention a few. That's some talented ladies, let me tell you. If you want to see how everyone finished at Junior Gold, you can head over to bowl.com, click on the Youth tab, and go to the Junior Gold Championships. And all the information is there for not only this year's Junior Gold 2021, but all the history of Junior Gold as well. All right, three spares, but uh, no shots in the pocket, no nine counts. Eight spare, eight spare, eight spare. Important to sit down, get a new game plan together, maybe a ball change. Looks like they're discussing that or a potential change on the lanes and adjustment. So gonna roll Pin it. coming over. Oh. Another great shot by Kayla. Ball coming in half pocket, leaving the 10 pin. Not using a spare ball. She'll just flatten her hand out, which gives you another option in the bag does not have the spare ball. We talked about that with only having the five balls. If you have a spare ball, it allows you only four. Good at flattening out her hand as well. Reminds me of the great Norm Duke. Mm -hmm. Flatten that ball out. Try to double tap the 10. Exactly a 10 pin match here through three frames. Advantage to Savannah. Perfect shot on the left lane. Right here, look at that left arm in front. She keeps that shoulder steady. Now that was that was right off her hand, the angle you're looking for, which is what I think Savannah needs is just a little bit more angle in the front. Not so much a ball change, but a little bit more angle. There you go. Beautiful. Just like that. Yep. 
Perfect. Gave it a couple more boards to the right. Going about 15 out to about 8, 9. Perfect. Now, again, I think you can actually move to the left lane, but you just have to make a bigger move off of that shot. Just looks like the ball just does does not want to get down lane in the in the mid lane. It's just reads so early on that lane. Which means I think she needs a bigger move. See, she didn't get she didn't get that one as far right in the front as she did on the right lane. I think she needs a bigger move on that lane. And honestly, it may just be with her feet, not her eyes. Help her create some of that angle in the front. Oftentimes they talk of a two and one, a three and two. You're suggesting maybe a three and oh. I would do, yeah, yeah, three and oh. Or if she's going to move everything, four and two. Come on. Yeah. And this is what you have to anticipate. You have to anticipate that Kayla's going to get up and make good shots because she's no stranger to this. She's used to being on, on TV and live stream. She's, you know, boldy. Elite Tour, the SYCs, you name it, she's bold at all. So she's comfortable with her environment. And I think that says a lot. So you have to anticipate good shots. So you have to make the move and don't, and you don't want to try to play catch up. Players finding their way to the pocket here mid game. Doubles on the board for each. Looking for a triple here. Oh, Ooh, what a great shot. It looked like to me she was a little nicer to it at the bottom, fed it to the spot. Rolled up just a little sooner and uh, stone seven. Packed it in there, couldn't have made a better shot, especially on the left lane. Max score for star, 235. 266 still left for Savannah. A lot of game left, but advantage Savannah here about halfway through the game. She made a move on this lane. She made a great shot last time on this right lane. See if she can repeat it. Fortunate to just leave the 4-7 here. Again, we see that ball check up on her. Didn't quite get as far out to she the is, right as she would like. She is using a ball that gets down the lane. It's a little bit cleaner. And in regard to what you were saying, Mike, I mean, at this point, I mean, the match is close. You know, you don't want to really, I mean, it, it's, it's what you're comfortable with. I, you know, I probably would have made a ball change the first game because knowing you have that second game for the championship, now, she's up in the match right now. I think it's more about on the right lane when she gets up. She had a good look. Keep that ball speed up. Just, just be confident in what you're doing. Be aggressive. Nine pen advantage for Savannah. Well, it's a good time for that. The crossover Brooklyn never really want to, to perform a shot like that and get a strike against your opponent, but she'll take it. This is what the tough conditions sometimes come down to, though. You know, if, if you do miss, you're, you're hoping for a break. And the Brooklyn's it. You can't give it back, right? No, you <laughs> cannot. Kayla's been rock solid on this right lane. Come on. Oh, oh, oh. Hit it. Hit it. Almost rolls the two pin. This is one of those shots where, remember I mentioned, I said, you know, on, on these conditions, you, you can throw it good and your ball does something different. Again, transition. But I didn't think that was that bad of a shot. I really didn't. And that's where you just pick up the spare and you move on to the next lane.
Uh oh. A mistake in the seventh by Starr. Now max score only 213. Max score for Savannah, 244. Very unlike Kayla to miss a spare like that. She's a very good spare shooter. Savannah going at a 204 pace. From my vantage point, that looked like the best shot she made on the left lane to me. Mm -hmm. It was a very good shot. Very good shot. Got it to where she needed to be. Comes in light. Again, not giving up the pocket. That's what counts. Just needs to regroup, make the spare. Which will keep her close in the match. Bears the 10. Now we look at the scoreboard. Max score for Kayla. 2.03. And again, Savannah going at that 2.04 pace. The next two shots are, are pretty big. She can really put some pressure on her. That looks like a good shot. Just a little bit at the end. And when we're low, I'd like to see the higher, you know, vantage point where you can actually see where the ball's getting to. It's just a little bit sharp. Just needs to be underneath it just a little bit more. Kind of roll through it. Kind of tame down that back end. But she got a break. It's, evident that, it's yeah. evident that this pattern right now that the more it's bowled on, mm -hmm. it seems like the earlier the ball wants to hook, and that's on both the lanes. I think the fronts start to hook. I, me personally, I think the fronts hooked anyway earlier. But yes, as they bowl on it and they transition, it almost like we're saying that ba that left lane looks like the back end's tighter. Well, the front's hooking, yeah. So it's going to appear tighter. We're on the same page. Huge shot right there to set herself up going into the tenth frame. Huge shot. Gets the high five from dad. Look at this. Perfect. Makes the move on that lane, and she threw it just a little bit harder. I would do the same thing on the right lane. Kayla really needs to strike out here. That one's inside a target. Will it hold? Yes. It does. And she's created a little room for herself yes, on that has. right lane with that with that trick release she has. Mm -hmm. She comes around it a little bit. She gets her thumb out of it really fast and then just flies around it with that open hand. I love it. She's already bowling PWBA stops when she can. I'm going to predict she's going to win a PWBA <laughs> title one day. Wow, way to go out on a limb there, Mike. 203 the max score. Can't she show up big in the 10th frame Another again? Ooh, got that one. And that was just, yep, just a little bit right here. Gets it, really gets it in a little bit further down the lane where she's been getting a little right in the front part of the lane. It never picked up. Leaves the 2 4 10. Well, she gave it an effort anyway. So she finishes out with 169. So you know what that means. Savannah Talon is your 2021 U15 girls champion. On the bench. Take a victory lap. Do whatever you would like on the shot. <laughs> Stay behind the foul line. <laughs> yeah. How about a strike? That's the way to end right there. Fist pump to dad. Little Nux. You know, when I talked to Savannah, she said her favorite pro bowlers were Chris Prather and Daria Pyoke. 
likes Chris Prather because of his smoothness and his confidence, and Daria because she's just an outstanding human being. She likes to model her game after both of those pros. And she bowled the game that you're supposed to bowl at Junior Gold right there. Clean frames, clean game. Got a couple of breaks, like everybody did, because of you know the way the condition was breaking down. But she made her spares, and that's why she's the champion. Grandma Pat, I know you're probably crying at home. Savannah Talon. Savannah Talon, your champion. A great scene. Mom, dad, little brother Michael. Congratulations. Packed house here in Indy. When we come back, Carolyn's going to interview Savannah here in just a moment here on Bull TV. I am here with Savannah, who is now your U15 girls champion here at Junior Gold. Savannah, congratulations, first of all. Now, you did not win the first game, but of course you have to lose twice, yeah. right? What adjustments did you make after the first match? So we saw that the right lane was hooking a little bit more, so we had me keep inching left until I could get myself in the pocket, and I finally got myself in the pocket that 10th frame. So, um, and then just making sure that I'm hitting my spots on the right lane because that was my, or on the left lane because that was my harder lane. So just keeping my head in the game, you know, just making sure everything is good. We had noticed that the left lane seems to be giving everybody trouble. So you made some great shots, especially in that 10th frame. So that's fantastic. What were your keys to success this year at Junior Gold? Um, my dad, for sure. He's my coach. Um, he's been here with me through everything. <laughs> I would not have made it here without him. <laughs> Um, I've been working so hard on my game and especially on my spare shooting. If you'd asked me eight months ago if I ever thought I'd be at this point, I would have told you no. If you asked me two weeks ago, I would have said no, but I, I've been working so hard for this and this is, this is just unreal. I'm so glad you said spares because I'm always preaching spares. Yeah. So I, I think that is fantastic and I love everybody working with their dad, which yep. is even better. So for all of the young girls that are watching now, what Give them a tip. Give them some something that will make them confident and want to come out here and compete at Junior Gold. Definitely just, you know, go for it. Like, don't ever give up. Like, it, it may seem unreachable. I thought that it was unreachable, but here I am. So just, just trust yourself, trust your coaches, and you just go for it. That's excellent. That's great advice. Congratulations again. We will see you in this setting again, I am sure. Back to you, Mike. Thank you very much, Carolyn. And excited, Savannah Talon took two games because Kayla Starr put her to the test. And I'm sitting here joined by Kayla Starr now. Kayla, how was your experience out there on the lanes? I had a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. It was great. You know, a lot of people talk about a stair step and pro progression, right? Mm -hmm. So it was just a few years ago that you missed the show, Yes. right? Talk about that a little bit. What happened? Um, yeah, it was pretty disappointing. I went up in the 10th, had to throw a good shot. I 4 7 9 It happens. And that was in the U12 division? Yes. So you finished fourth at Junior Gold. You just I missed did. the show. Now you come back this year, you make the show. Mm -hmm. you got to be able to build off of that, right? Yeah, it was a lot of fun, just a new opportunity. I enjoyed it. Yeah, so let's talk about your ball reaction because you had something figured out on that right lane. Yes. Out of all the shows that we've had here over the course of all your matches, it seemed like the right lane was just very friendly for you. Why What? Why was that? Um, you know, I just wasn't really making great shots on the left lane either. 
So um, I was just comfortable. I really saw the picture on the right lane, and I knew I could throw it there. And the left lane, you know, Carolyn and I, it's been kind of puzzling us a little bit. What did yeah. you see on the left lane that gave you guys so much trouble? You just said that you, you didn't make good shots, but there had to be something going on with that lane. Um, yeah, I thought it hooked a little bit early. You know, you saw Sydney in the match before, uh, kind of with the same issue. So I thought the same thing. Yeah, let's talk about that match with Sydney. I mean, yeah. that one was kind of gift wrapped to you, not because yeah. she bowled bad, right? No, she threw the ball amazing. She bowled really well. She split, unfortunately, a couple of times when she threw it really good. Yeah, absolutely. So um, what what's next for you in, in your bowling career? Do you keep bowling junior gold, uh, bowling back home? Are you going to bowl a bunch of the tournaments that are available out there for the youth? What are you doing? Yeah, of course. I always want to learn and learn new things. And what are, what are your goals uh, on what you want to do? Um, my goal is just to keep getting better, uh, learn more about lane play, transitions, moves, all of that, bowling balls. Yeah. Yeah get out there and do some more competing here yeah well it was a joy to watch you on the telecast i gotta tell you 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 bowled awesome thank you and you look like you're not too defeated no i had fun yeah you did yeah and you had people here cheering you on Mm -hmm. awesome and all the bowl tv community as well thank you all right well that's uh that's going to do it from the u15 girls uh when we come back here on bowl tv we'll have the u15 boys i want to thank kayla for spending a little bit of time with me here and we'll also be giving away a bowling ball from brunswick when we come back here on bowl tv Carolyn and I would like to welcome you back to the Junior Gold Championships. Mike and Carolyn with you, of course, here for what's upcoming to be our U15 Boys Division. It's going to be another great match. Um, we see some two-handers again, right? We saw Bella, the first young girl, doing it two-handed. Now, every time you see a telecast, there's one or two two-handers on there. I mean, as a matter of fact, there have been a few telecasts where it's been all two-handers. So it is the wave of the future. But these three boys are very experienced, as in bowling tournaments all over the country. Again, there's so many events that are now run for scholarship money on sport patterns. And we, we keep saying the same thing. There's so much, They're so much more advanced at their age than I ever thought I could be. Yeah, absolutely. Trevor Ashby, our number three seed, number two seed, Ethan Caruso, and number one, Landon Jordan. we got a ton of talent here on the show. But before we get to the show, we have a special treat for our Bowl TV community. We're going to give away another bowling ball from our friends at Brunswick, a great sponsor of the Junior Gold Program. So we're going to get it queued up for you right now. So you want to make sure you minimize your screen so you can click the submit button. There'll be a countdown. Then you can have the opportunity to to go ahead and click on that button to win that bowling ball. We give away a lot of cool things here on Bowl TV. So good luck to everybody on the bowling ball giveaway. It's a Brunswick knockout is the bowling ball from our friends at Brunswick. We thank you very much for sponsoring this segment of our program. So let's preview things, Carolyn. Trevor Ashby. I know that coming in, you hadn't seen Trevor bowl a whole lot. We have an opportunity to see him practice here a little bit. He, he likes to hook the ball quite a bit. Yes, he does. He, he's probably going to be a little bit further left, uh, possibly, than the other two boys. Definitely uh, one of them. And, again, comes in with some experience with the uh, Mid-Atlantic Youth event that the Gasson family runs. Very big event on the East Coast. Again, a lot of experience on patterns so they know what to expect. Yep, our number two seed, Ethan Caruso, and he's from the he's from the Illinois area, of course. Uh, Trevor from from Rawlings, Maryland. It's going to be interesting to watch all of the even watching them now as they warm up. Um, I like the fact that they try all the different parts of the lane. They don't get locked in to hey, this is how I need to play the pattern. Of course, you're going to talk about it a little bit, but this is the 59th pattern that they're bowling on this <laughs> week, and. Um, <laughs> Well, I mean, when you get past four or five, I mean, oh. they all start to look the same. Um, but again, you're going to talk a little bit about they've seen different patterns all week. So this is just another, hey, let me throw my ball here. Let me throw my ball here. Let me throw my ball here. Let me see where I can hit the head pin because we're going to talk about this throughout the match. Where can I stay the most consistent in the pocket and hopefully fill frames? And of course, the winner goes on to take on Landon Jordan from Sycamore, Illinois. So a couple more practice shots here left. Got a packed house here again, here in Indy, of course. We've got some Hall of Famers here, including yourself. Yes. Dell's here. I saw Parker Bone. 
Mike Albee in the crowd. Doug Kent. Um, I want to say something, though, about Landon. One of the things, uh, DeAndres, Elite Youth Tour, 20 titles. That's a lot of titles. And the kid's 15. Let me just double check that. 14. Age 14. I'm sorry. I saw the 15 over here. October 15th. Obviously, must be his birthday. Yep, that's when he'll okay. be 15. So he's 14 years old, and he's got 20 of these Elite Tour titles, some youth championships. I mean, it's crazy. Do you know what I mean? That, again, he didn't just do it once. He did it 20 times. So, again, none of these boys are a stranger to tough conditions. They know what it takes to be patient and just execute the shots just like the girls showed us in the, in the previous match. So, again, it, it's going to be – I'm going to see – well, here's the other thing. I think we're going to see higher scores if – some of them use urethane. Okay, and I think we're going to see the deepest we've seen players migrate to on the lanes uh, in, in these upcoming matches. I that's, agree with that's that. That's my prediction. Unless they use the urethane ball, then they may stay towards the right. But U15 boys, 630 entries. There was a cut to 90, a cut to 56, a cut to 16, double elimination bracket. That's what we've been doing here. So our top seed... Our man Landon, he's got to lose twice. And ever since I made the comment about no one, um, you know, beating the champion, right? Having the champion have to go into that second match. Our last two have been to the second match. <laughs> yeah, so this time I don't think it's going to happen. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm <laughs> just kidding. We love overtime here, folks, here on We Bowl do. TV. We do. More nerve for us. Keep throwing it. And as I watch the warm-up, again, I'm going to say, well, you know, Mike, I don't, we can talk a little bit about this before they start. We don't know the pattern. The lanes are re-oiled for each live stream show, correct? But again, watching the boys warm up, that left lane still seems to be the one that everybody's throwing more shots on because I think the right lane, again, the right lane seems to be very uh, predictable. The left lane, I think because it hooks early, seems like the back end is tight because once you miss, it's either to the right or way you miss to the left. So it's, I predict again, that, that left lane, unless you use urethane. I'm going to say that's the magic to the left lane. Yeah, I am. I, I'd be interested to see if, if anybody gets creative on the left lane mm -hmm. and, and tries to play the extreme outside part of the lane with a weak ball, mm. higher ball speed, or if someone just wants to take a giant step left, go left to right, mm -hmm. float it through the front part, through the mid lane, down to the tracer. We will see. Yeah. Looks like practice is over. We'll wait for our in-house announcements here to kick off the U15 Boys Junior Gold Finals. In our U15 Boys Division first match, our competitors from Shanahan, Illinois, Ethan Caruso. All right, first look at Ethan Caruso. Yeah. Urethane. Urethane. A little bit further right, and a little more Rawlings, direct. Maryland, Trevor Ashby. <laughs> Ethan from Chanahan, Illinois. Trevor from Rawlings, Maryland. Well, you called it. Two urethane balls in this match to start here. Great shot. Playing a little bit further to the right. And what you're going to see here is Trevor is more of what you would consider, and I don't know how you say this now, so the two-handed traditional style. 
where it's a little more of the elbow up, right? But when you saw um, Ethan, he's a little bit more of a straighter arm. So again, now you're looking at two-handed bowling with a little bit of different style. Absolutely. So you can change, Mike, if you'd like. Six seven on the left lane to Trevor. Trying to play a little direct on that left lane, but as you can see, it's still picking up pretty early. But I'm sticking to the game plan. I think if you move left off that with the urethane, you'd be okay. Both players are 15 years old. Gets one. You talk about styles mm -hmm. and Ethan Caruso here. He looks up to Kyle Troop and Francois Lavaux. Francois Lavaux because he's calm and he's smooth the way that he bowls. He likes to model after him. But he's been compared to Kyle Troop. Another great shot. Well, you can see he is. He's not as, you know, the elbow and I all compare Kyle and, and Belmo. It, first of all, all of them are good. Chris Vi, right? But Chris Vi does not look like Kyle Troop, and Chris Vi does not look like Belmo getting to the line, right? So, again, you're looking at two unique styles, right, with the carrying of the ball where the elbow goes up near the ear, right? And here, what they're going to do with that, and they're going to create the same thing on the lane just doing it a little differently. Ethan Moore up the back of the ball. All right, seven falls out. Almost looks like a celebration shot there. Got this one a little bit left. You could see it just hooks at the end, and but gets the break. Down goes the seven. And that's what you need. Ethan is most definitely the most deliberate bowler that we've seen so far today. It's been very fast, rapid pace, as we've also had our other divisions bowling here under the lights. <laughs> Chooses to throw at it with a plastic ball. You know, right there you see the fist pump to each other. A lot of sportsmanship at Junior Gold. We saw it a lot through all the match play. A lot of respect for one another. And that's what these, you know, tournaments are really all about. I know it's about the bowling and if somebody's going to win and walk away with scholarship money and trophy. But it really is the lifelong friends. And the, like we said, a lot of them start chats with each other and keep in touch you know, when they don't see each other. That one fired a bit down the lane, looked a little quick, uh, leaves the bucket. A little bit harder. Ball didn't quite break. The way it did in the first frame, leaves the 2-4. I thought he left the bucket, right? Yep. I can't see it. It goes by so fast. He's uh, coached back home by Brian Robinson, who's also competes in PBA events. Bowls the Masters, U.S. Open almost every year. We want to give a shout-out to Brian today for all the help he's given him. <laughs> Trevor practices all the time, bowls tournaments constantly, always trying to hone his craft. Well, as the talent level, especially at the 12 and the 15 age, continues to just get better and better, you have to continue to practice to stay on top of your, um, what is that called, like group. You know, the U15, that's a tough group of boys. It is. Got a handful there. So both shots on the left lane coming in high. Trevor. That was left off of his hand. 
And I think in this on this left lane, again, what we've been seeing is really the only person who had a good look during a match on this left lane was our last match, Kayla. Trevor with 45 in the third, a spare working in the fourth. Ethan with a double, seven spare. Early advantage to Ethan. The light mixer leaves the four. Light shaker four. Great shot though, he got this one further right. Look at this. Good reaction. Leaves himself an easy spare. Of course, I shouldn't say that. Is any spare on, on TV or live stream easy? No, not at all. I don't think so either. <laughs> I love listening to the crowd. Oh, yeah. I heard a definitive hook yeah. out of someone's mouth. A lot of bowlers in the Wait crowd, too. out of the plastic ball. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were throwing the plastic ball at the sphere, so it doesn't hook. <laughs> Ethan in 2017 started bowling competitively, and he's also coached by Will Clark. He's got his mom, Gail, his dad, Brent, his brother, Brandon, who's 17, finished 34th this year. He and his brother Brandon are very close. Brandon's also got his girlfriend, Isa, here. He wanted me to make sure I didn't leave that out. <laughs> Great shot. Makes the adjustment on the left lane. Great. I love, I'm going to tell you, I love that angle. Keeps up his ball speed a little bit. Again, we talked about the angles being straighter. Takes a little bit of the pattern out of play. He's two-handed, so he's going to have a rev rate. That's about the most I've seen the ball go up the lane mm -hmm. today. But he got that one way right. It tried to get there. Yeah, it sure it's did. close. It's close. And honestly, with his ball speed, he probably could move a couple right with his feet and do the same thing and be fine. Wiping that ball down, making sure he's getting as much oil off of it as possible. It is allowed by rule. There you go. Great, sh great spare. I am going to test you on a rule, though. Uh -oh. Oh, me too, though. I'm PBA bad. Atkinson, and no, that is name. he's not around <laughs> right now. No, no. You said wiping off the, the ball, right? Yep, yep. Does it have to be with a dry towel? Yes, dry towel, right? Dry towel, dry correct? Dry towel, yep. So, yep. So microfiber, dry towel, same thing. Shemmy. <laughs> Well, towels have uh, certainly <laughs> evolved over yes, the years. Yes, they have. Maybe yes, as much have. as bowling balls. Oh, a break. You have noticed that in all of the matches that we have commentated, right? Yep. It's that left lane where the Brooklyns <laughs> have been the best. I know. I, uh, it's amazing. <laughs> Okay, we see a couple of urethane balls tracking down the lane now. We've seen a couple shots come in light, even on this right lane. Mm -hmm. Doesn't quite get that one as far right as he did on the last shot, but still, good shot, hits the pocket, leaves himself a two pin. He changes to a plastic ball, as we said. We heard it yell hook. All right, Ethan's been bowling junior gold here for the last couple of years. He bowled in 2018 in the U12. He finished in about 140th position, he told us, and in U15 in 2019, finished 288th. Of course, we skipped 2020, unfortunately, for, for the reasons we all know why, but back in 2021, makes the show. It's 
Still not a bad shot on that left lane. Now, don't forget with the urethane balls, what, what tends to happen? They tend to get a little bit tighter, right? So, again, with the way they are playing the lanes, I would think just that simple move now to the right and still keep the same angle. I agree with you. All right, Ethan's happy with that spare. As he's taking a deep breath as he's walking off the lanes, I love it. And you know, three years ago, Trevor picked up the game of bowling, and we, we've talked about this a little bit today if you've watched our other telecasts, but he also is a product of the Kids Bowl Free Program. Found out about the free games of bowling in the summertime, went to the bowling center, fell in love with bowling, started three years ago, and he says his entire life is bowling. He just loves bowling, everything about it, watches it on TV, watches it on YouTube, and watches Bowl TV. He loves it, and he loves that shot. Think about it. He's only been bowling three years, and he's on the telecast, and he throws it like that. That's pretty good. Yeah, and the other thing that a lot of people don't know uh, that, were, that didn't have the opportunity to come to Junior Gold this year is the environment in the match play last night and this morning was crazy, was crazy atmosphere. Huge crowds, lots of cheering. It reminded me of, like, the first Pro-Am and then the match play I went and watched on the PBA Tour in the mid-'90s. Huge crowds, a lot of pressure for these kids. Gave that ball just a little bit more angle. Right here you'll see it. Little angle in the front, there you go. To the right of our favorite tracer, high flush. And using his ball speed to his advantage. Ethan up right away, delivers a strike. Great shot, got that one just a little bit further right down the lane, you'll see it right here. Remember the last one he kept in around nine, came in a little light, that one, got it to the right. Take a look at the scoreboard here. We've got a close match. 233 max score for Trevor, 234 max score for Ethan. Yeah. Now we see some emotion. Look at this one here, Carolyn. Perfect, direct, even has some hold. I love it. I'm telling you, I think your thing is the way to go. I think you can continue to hit the pocket. Your moves are subtle. You can even change your ball speed to make it do different things. So I like it because I think it's controllable. And with that strike, Ethan controls his own destiny. Ninth frame, foundation frame, and look at the strike from Trevor. Now Trevor has that opportunity you all want. Step up in the 10th frame, throw three strikes, force your opponents to do the same thing to win. By 110. Correct? Am I correct on that one? You know me. i to double check my math. 234 max score for Ethan. He's sitting on the bench. Trevor Ashby going up here in the 10th frame. Ethan has to match whatever Trevor does. Big shot on the left lane here. He posted that shot. He loved it off his hand. Once he started to get that angle in the front, look at that. That's perfect right there. I love that. Again, Posting the shot, watching your ball go through the pins so you can see what your ball is doing. That was awesome. I hope his mom gets him that photo. Not bad, leaves the eight. Pretty good shot on the left lane there. So now max score 222. It's gonna force Ethan Caruso to go up in the 10th frame and throw the first strike.
Okay, 2-12 is the score. So a strike on this ball, he must have a strike here. If he gets eight on the next Correct. ball and a spare, we have a tie. Mm -hmm. Nine spare, a winner, and strike, of course, a winner. Yes, I was just going to say that we have the chance for a tie. Boy, my math skills are getting good. Got to have it. He posted it. He posted it. He liked it. He did off his hand. I thought it was just a little slow. But the shots in the 10th, boy, by Trevor, how important was that shot in the 10th? Great tournament for Ethan. Congratulations, young man. He will be back. 193, the final tally. Coming up next, we're going to have Trevor Ashby taking on our number one seed, Landon Jordan. But before we do that, we're going to have Carolyn head down to the lanes to talk to our man, Ethan Caruso. I am here with Ethan, who just finished third in the U15 division. Ethan, you had your fate in the hands, in your own hands, on that right lane. What was going through your mind, and what did you, what happened there on that shot? Um, I was just really trying to tell myself, just do what I've been doing all week, throw just a really good shot, try your hardest. I think I was just a little slower on the shot. I was a little more, the release was a little different on the ball. And just because of that, the ball just hit it up a little earlier, didn't hit pocket, just wasn't able to get the result that I necessarily wanted, but I mean, yeah, it was all really good. Well, you've had a great week. We have been talking about the left lane is the lane that's been giving everybody trouble. Why did you decide to throw urethane? Um, it was really just giving me the best look during practice. I was trying three balls during practice. I was standing a ball with the urethane up the gutter. I was throwing a middle of the line ball up the middle, and I was throwing a reactive ball far left. And overall, the best look was urethane, and it was just giving me the best look overall. Okay, so you have a great start here at Junior Gold for this summer. There's some tournaments coming up. What are some of your goals for this year? Um, goals? I mean, I'm really just trying to... It's more mentality than physically goals. My mental game has always been my weak point, and I'm really trying to just hone in on that, and I'm trying to just throw good. I don't really care about the results. If I throw the ball good, I'll be happy with how the year goes. I mean, it's really just that far. I really would like to win more. I would really just win. <laughs> just do it. Just win. I mean. Well, I think you're on your way. You're doing great. This is a great start, right, yep. to your summer swing. You've got some tournaments coming up. And I love your, you know, we always try to give the kids that are watching something to strive for. And you telling them you just want to throw good shots and you would be happy. How about spare shooting? Um, My spares. <laughs> I mean, just, just maybe like a week before this tournament, I changed up. A lot of my spares. I changed my 10 pin line. I changed all of my left side spares because I think that would have given me a better chance because before I was hooking at my left side spares and that really made it dependent on the pattern. So I changed it to more of a straight release and that gave me a lot better left side spares. And spares wise, I feel really good with my spare game. I mean, my spares are actually one thing that I really pride myself on. I feel like I have a really good spare game, if I were to say that. And I feel like my spares actually did really good this week. I mean, I picked up every single makeable I did in the match. I couldn't ask for more. I mean, the one thing that I missed was a split. Great. Perfect. Well, thank you for that advice. Did you hear that? The mental game and spares. Great week. Mike, back to you. Thank you, Carolyn. The other thing I need to mention about Ethan is uh, he wants to be on Big Brother one day. And I think uh, seeing his personality there a little bit... Uh, 
I think he's got a shot. So if there's any Big Brother casting folks out there, we'd like to have Ethan on, on Big Brother. His favorite show, loves to watch it with the family, loves reality TV. All right, folks, when we come back, we're going to have our championship match. Trevor Ashby taking on Landon Jordan. We'll be back just after these messages from our sponsors. 2021 Junior Gold Championships here from Indy. Mike Flanagan along with Karen Dolan Ballard here with you. And we're here set for our championship match. U15 boys, 630 started. Now we're down to two. Down to two. And then we have two more shows. In our so this is, <laughs> but it's been here. great youth bowling. Well, well let's Sycamore, let him finish. Illinois, Landon Jordan. Okay, so so Landon elects to start the match on the left lane. He'll finish on the right lane. Which I think coming into this match, that is the smartest thing to do. I don't care what your look is on both lanes. I would still finish on that right lane because I think it's more forgiving. I agree 100%. Smart choice by the young man. Remember, he's got to lose twice. Yeah. Two-hander, and when I was calling the action over at Strike Force, he had a great look, look over there. Two games to become your champion. And he from Rawlings, Maryland, Trevor Ashby. I keep forgetting that Zach's going to make an announcement, but he he actually has a little bit of a two-handed style between both of the other two-handers. Okay, great. We got two strikes to start the match. Great shot by Trevor, especially since sitting on the bench, right, since the last match, watching the practice shots by his opponent. We predicted high scoring. If they were both using urethane, but we have something to talk about on the next shot, don't we? We do. By the way, Trevor, he, he couldn't be here without his brother, Nathan, who's 19, a huge supporter of his. His mom, Jennifer, his dad, Mark. He said, thanks for being with me the whole way, guys. Off his, off his hand, that ball was left, and you could hear hold, hold, so just just overturned it, missed left with it. While we have a moment, Trevor also wanted me to give a shout-out to Vicki Coughlin, who's the local USBC representative who runs tournaments around town, and, of course, you mentioned it earlier, Billy Gasson, who runs the Storm Mid-Atlantic Youth Tour, where he gets to go out and own his craft. Landon a year younger, he's 14, Sycamore, Illinois. You see off to the right, that's his mom, Christina, dad, Anthony. His dad, Anthony, actually has won a USBC Eagle. He's a team all events champion, so bowling in the family. He's got a twin brother, Griffin, who finished 35th in this event. And Rylan, who's 10 years old, his sister, who's not really a bowler, just cheers everybody on. Another great shot going right up and at him. Actually gets that one going a little right to left, but see how he's a little more up the back of it? A little bit more forward roll to control that back end reaction. And we have been told that that ball he is using is, do you want to say it or do you want me to say it? You go ahead. It's a spare ball. It is a spare ball. And from what we know, it's a polyester plastic type ball. He must be comfortable with that in his hand to be able to throw that on today's telecast. Goes to Sycamore Middle School, getting ready to go into high school. Big transition for these bowlers going from middle school to high school. It is, and, and you know what, though? 
And those high school teams are going to have some awesome wow. bowlers coming yeah, in. Yeah, that's a great I mean, point. those are stout teams with some of these kids on them. I love that look on the lane. Unbelievable. I mean, he looks so comfortable. And again, smooth off his hand, just keeping it end over end, controlling it with the plastic ball as well as not trying to over rotate it. What a great game plan. Landon, Landon putting the pedal to the metal, but look at Trevor here. That one right there, I don't think he really liked it, but got away with it. No, he looked like he stuck just a little bit here. See how he stuck just a little bit, but you're right. If you're going to, make sure you throw it in the right spot, right? But that's also the urethane ball. It's not going to overhook, so... It helps having it to give a little bit of that mistake area because on the patterns, that's what you're looking for, which you don't have much of. But with the urethane and the plastic, obviously you're able to create something. All right. How about a double on the board? Gets this one in just a little bit. But doesn't go quite through the nose and trips the four pin. I love that hit. That one relaxes the arm swing a little bit because it's on the left lane. You hit the one three, could have left a four pin, trip it out. It's gonna make you feel good. Comes in just a little light. He actually threw that one a little more to the right. He's been going very right to left, but gets a break. Trips out the two, leaving the four. I'd say he'd take out a spare ball to shoot at it, but he's using it on his first shot too, so it's the only one he's going to use this game. Yeah, going very much up the lane, keeping his angles squared off, trying to not give the pocket away. Okay, so Trevor takes the lead sitting on the bench. So so think about this a little bit, Mike. So we have um, Trevor, who's using urethane, has slight angle in the front, just a little bit, right, to smooth out the reaction. And then we have Landon throwing plastic, going a little more right to left. What era are we in? It's 2021, <laughs> Carolyn. He's got the left lane figured out, which nobody else has been able to do over the course of two days and three and a half telecasts. Great shot. Again, like we just said, going a little more right to left, keeping it very straight in front of him. Great reaction. Kicking that 10 back. A creative approach for Landon today. I like that. That shows a lot of maturity right there. Sure Something does. didn't feel right, stopped in the middle of his approach. He's resetting, doing his pre-shot routine, very important. I'm glad he did that. Reset himself, ready to go. And wonderful shot after the, the time he needed to take to get recomposed. Excellent. Well worth it. And look at his eyes. That was a great shot of his eyes, keeping it, you know, right on where he wants that ball to go. Another great tip. 
for everyone who's watching, keeping that head and those eyes steady. Back home in Maryland, he actually bowls in a sport league with Kayla Starr, who we saw earlier. Both from, they're both big Washington fans. Kayla likes Steven Strasburg, her favorite pitcher. And Trevor here, he, beautiful shot, beautiful shot there. Trevor's a huge Washington Nationals fan, Washington Capitals, and the Redskins. So if Jason Couch is watching, there's two of you now. Trevor looking comfortable on that left lane, and that has been the lane that has been the deciding factor in most of our matches. Kept his angles up the lane. Looks like he got a handful of that one. Hits the one three. Great shot though. I mean, could have tripped four pin. And again, if you're keeping your angles that straight, all he's got to do is, again, these are the, these would be parallel moves with the plastic ball, one and one, and just do the same thing. Landing going at a Dutch 200 pace here. Max score for Trevor Ashby. He's still got 280 left. Landon's got 20 elite youth tour titles. I'm going to say that again. He has 20 <laughs> titles. That's the first shot. Right here, gets it way left. Almost gets around it too much. He's been more up the back of it, a little bit more forward. The great thing about this, though, is if Trevor does win the game, he gets to play again. True double elimination format. So the three-time Illinois Pepsi State Champion will take a seat. Now Trevor Ashby looking for five in a row. He's just super comfortable now. Yep, through that with authority. He's going through his pre-shot routine. He's taking his time, posting his shot, watching that ball go right through the pins. Five in a row. Shot here in the eighth can really solidify things here in this first game. Even creating a little room on the left lane. Got that one a little bit further right, and it's still slapping out the 10. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that is urethane. Almost half pocket, kicking the 10 pin to the left. Looks like Landon conceding this game is going to start trying some other things. We see him going to a different bowling ball here. Looks like he switches to a reactive ball and starts to open up the lane a little bit. What do you see here? Made a move to the left, definitely getting around it. 
just a little bit more. Not bad reaction at all. Playing him more like Kayla. Just on the right lane, it looks like. We've seen a couple of those here in this building, here at Expo Bowl. This lane definitely hooks earlier, so honestly, I like the look of the plastic ball on that lane. Stone 7 can't do anything about it. Match is over. I would make the spare. Oh, he's got one more on the right lane. Yeah, and, and, and you know Dad's talking game plan with them here. And, you know, the plan to, to use the plastic ball on the left lane, the lane that hooks earlier, makes a lot of sense, like you said. Got to look with Reactive on the right lane. He'll get three more tester shots on the right lane. He'll talk things over with Dad, I'm sure. They're going to figure things out. And now Trevor here just, just keeps striking. Max score, 280, doing exactly what he needs to do. He's got a great look with that urethane ball. He's comfortable. He's got a match under his belt. He's looking to go 2-0 and here to start. Basically, what both of these boys have done is taken the lane out of play. This is controlling the pocket. They have bowling balls in their hands in which they can do whatever they want to it, and it's still going to give them that smooth motion. He's looking very comfortable out there. So great to see fans here. Fantastic game by Trevor. Making the right adjustments. Controlling the lane. Making his, spa his one spare this game. <laughs> yeah, it's one spare. It's one spare. Well, we just doubled that count. <laughs> two, <ca> <laughs> two spares. He's looking to have the high game here on the championship pair here at the Junior Gold Championships thus far. Two fifty seven, the final score for Trevor Ashby. So he's halfway home here to what he needs to do. Again, true double elimination format here. This is a bracket. Sixteen players were in the bracket. Landon came in undefeated. Which means his challenger must win twice. That looks pretty good too. Made the adjustment off the first shot. If you have been watching, you know that second tracer has been our key. Getting it to the right of that tracer. High flush every time. See Doug and Chrissy Kent down there. Looks like they're sharing some popcorn with Melissa McDaniel. USBC president. So in the next match, we may see reactive on the right lane. Is that the Texas flag on his sock? I, I was thinking the same thing, but he's from Chicago. Eh, well, maybe he likes Texas. I don't know. Maybe he likes the Texas Rangers. You know, I think the Blues brothers actually fled to Texas. Maybe that's got something to do with it. Okay. I do like this reaction on the right lane. Ball change. Yeah, so what do you do? You start the match again on the left lane. You finish on the right lane, and you throw reactive on the right lane, and you throw plastic on the left. I guess you take your chances. I would still finish on that the right lane. Match, but now we do have to go to a final game to determine our U15 boys champion. In just a moment, we will have the scoring monitor set up to begin our last and final game. 
So I was going to say, I would definitely still finish on the right lane. I still feel like it's more forgiving. Yep, I agree. Well, this is shaping up to be one heck of a final here, Carolyn. I we said high scoring. We did. Oh, I was going. Hey, I'm going to kill JT. I swear. Well, let's okay, not. Okay, forget let's not it. Do nope. That. I'm let's tired. Uh uh. Nope. Forget it. We're on. We're on. Forget it. Do <laughs> you see what I have to put up with here, folks? Between the, the JT over here producing and Carolyn here, but hey, this is an opportunity to give it up for it, our entire <laughs> crew here. If he's going to continue to surprise me, I will continue to just be natural. Uh, well, that's. And as you know, with me, what you see is what you get. Yep, that's okay. absolutely right. So, who do you like, and who do you like in this match here? You think Landon with the two different balls, the two different reactions, or do you like Trevor going straight at him with the urethane? Well, Trevor did bowl a great game, went high on that last shot. But I think that ball change is going to be key on the right lane. And I got to tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking the swap. I'm thinking Landon. You're liking Landon. I, yeah. yeah. And you know, the other thing is it, it does something to and you when you know you have two games. Game, so match. I think his nerves are settled From in. From Sycamore, Illinois, he's got Landon a good Jordan. Well, Landon is going to start the match on the left lane, it looks like here as we head to the lanes. Glad you're with us here on Bull TV. We can't thank our community enough for being part of our broadcast here today. Well, plastic is fantastic, and that's what we get in Frame number one. He's sticking with the plastic on the Rollins, left Maryland, lane. Trevor Ashby. Coming off a big 250 game. Got that one just a little right, but left, I believe, lower seven pin. Can I see it? Nope. Light nine pin. Or was it seven? Yep, okay, it is seven. seven. I can't see. I'm looking around the chair, and it looks like a nine pin. I think that was a big shot there for Trevor to, to come out and, and hit the pocket, execute. Mm -hmm. I know he didn't carry, but with what Landon's been doing, uh, it's build a little confidence, even if he didn't carry the shot. And he, he has a good look on the right lane. He just went a little bit high on that left lane, leaving the nine pin. And then, of course, going high on the fill shot. So it will be interesting to see if he makes a move on this first shot. Oh, by the way, if anybody's watching from Storm Bowling, when he's asked the question, what do you want to do when you grow up? He wants to be a PBA pro bowler, and he wants to work for Storm Bowling. I see an internship in the future. <laughs> Hit I'm him not, thin. Watch I'm him not thin. sure he moved, but he looks like he threw it just a little bit harder. Ball gets down the lane a little further. Right here, it starts to creep up, and who says there's an eight pin? Who says the left lane's hard, you two in who? the booth? Exactly. Not anymore. Landon is perfect on the right lane with the reactive. Definitely comes across his body on that one. You could see his body motion also missing the head pin. Okay, that to me is just a shot. That's a little bit of nerves. Even though, even though he has a game under his belt. Well, the first game was a free roll for him. He knew he had another game in his pocket. He bowled a great game.
switches to plastic for the spare. Perfect I mean, cover. I, hey, I mean, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah. But now he's got doubt on the right lane. He's got doubt in his mind because he's, he's, he's got to make a perfect shot on the right lane with reactive. Right, but he high flushed each shot in the 10th the first game. Yep. I don't think he should have any doubt. I think he should chalk that up to just it was a bad shot. I need to regroup. I'm rock solid on the left lane and then just get up on the right lane and do what he did in the 10th. Well, for anybody who says they can't use plastic right here, right to left, keeping it pretty darn straight to the pocket, taking the lane pattern out of play, who cares what's on the lane? I am going to hit the 1-3. Ooh. Got away with one there, inside a target, leaves the four. Just a little bit, was a little off balance too, as you can see his right foot going down. Helped that one just a little bit with his upper body, but got a break with the four pin, and that's what you're looking for. Again, we talked a, a lot about during junior goal with all the bowling that I watched, a lot of four, uh, four six, sevens high in the pocket. You know what I mean? It, it's you thought you threw a good shot and just that little bit going high and if you could break up the splits you picked up pins it was the splits that really killed a lot of people during qualifying and in the matches oh did you hear his mom yeah yell out pre-shot routine I think it's very important. He's very good at it. He's very consistent with it. Just giving him a little reminder. So another tip, right? We see that all the time out of the pro bowlers talking about their pre-shot routine. Not his best effort on the left lane. No, definitely missed way left. You could see that's right, almost right over the tracer. He's been getting it to the right of the tracer. Leaves the three six ten. You can see him motioning. Slow it down a little bit. I'm sure their heart is racing. This is where that breathing comes into effect. Taking just a minute. And just went by the three pin. Looked good off his hand, but an open frame. Let's look at it again here. Just sliding by. So 66 in the fourth now. Landon's got himself a real opportunity on this right lane. Remember, he made a really bad shot, missed the head pin left the last time on this lane, but was perfect before that since switching to the reactive resin bowling ball. Much better shot on this right lane. Again, he's going to be able to create some area. Both of them will because of being two-handed. Opted for the reactive resin on the right lane. Didn't like his reaction. I think it's the right call. He finished the first game. High flush, high flush, high flush. One bad shot, comes back, regroups, blows the rack. You hear the crowd, flush strike with plastic. After he let this ball go, I heard push, push, push. Gets it going just a little bit more direct, but because it's plastic, it surely is not going to hook. So Brooklyn. many revolutions on that bowling ball. Now Landon has a max score of 280. 246 left for Trevor Ashby. 
halfway through the game. Good comeback shot, gets it just a little bit further right, which he can do. That has been his best shot on that right lane. That's something you see out of the younger players also. You know, years ago, before a lot of the mental training, they would have a bad shot and then get up and there might be another bad shot or, or you know, something there was another error made. Now you're seeing them refocus, get up, and making quality shots after an open. Get up. Yes, and he posted that one and he liked it. 10 in the pit. Right here he says, I'm going nowhere. Got that ball. There's our favorite spot. High flush. He's happy. You know, they always say if, if you have an open frame, you got to throw a double to make up for it. And Trevor just did. Looking good on the right lane. We're chalking the first frame up on the right lane to first, first ball jitters of a new game. Every shot since then has been perfect. Can max out at 280 and 246. Scoring pace has picked up here in our championship match. U15 boys. Really glad you're with us here on Bowl TV. Don't forget on Bowl TV, we've got all kinds of great competition coming up for you now through the end of the year, including the PWBA Tour. Solid nine. Wow. I mean, that shot could not have been more pure. And did you see that ball just go to the left of the nine pin? Yeah, and usually plastic deflects, but the rev rate that Landon creates, he's an extreme power player for being such a small person in stature, generates so much power. As he changes to his plastic ball for his spare. <laughs> So max score now for Landon, 259. Max score, Trevor, 246. Shaping up to be a good one here, Carolyn. I would say the next two shots are pretty big for Trevor. Definitely puts a little more pressure on Landon. Almost leaves the four nine, trips out the four, leaving the nine pin. Direction looked great. Maybe just a pinch slow. I think ball speed is important right now as the lanes are still transitioning. Also after qualifying in the advancers rounds, when they went into the bracket, Landon was your number one seed in the 16 player bracket. Trevor Ashby was the number 10 seed coming into the bracket. Ring 10. Good shot, because I was just going to make the comment that it's not over yet. But he is in a must strike situation. Needs to make the spare. Just a waiting game now to see if there's any possibility. Uh-oh. 
Well, not a good time for that. This just bad shot, you know. Um. It happens, but mm -hmm. that was. It happens, but you don't want it to happen in the eighth frame when you need every pin possible because you know your opponent has a great look on the lanes. Landing going at 229 pace. Trevor can only get into two O's. One shot closer to the trophy. What a fantastic ball change going from urethane on one lane to a reactive ball, moving a little deeper, getting around it, but still controlling that pocket. As you can see, it's moving. It's making a smooth motion to the pocket and throwing plastic on the left lane. That has given everyone who is bold on this pattern trouble. He took the pattern out of play. Oh, sending a messenger with the plastic ball. I love it. We are reliving the 80s right here, everyone. Reliving the 80s. Take a look Comes at this again. Half pocket sends it off the wall across. Goodbye. You are the weakest link, 10 pin. I think Mike Galby is having visions of grandeur. I think he is too. I think so. There he is, there's Mike. He's saying to himself, I used to do that. Good shot by Trevor, still wants to go out, proving to himself how great he's bowled all week and that he did make the right decision. I, I think he made the correct decision using urethane. Just had a couple of errored shots, got a little quick. Yeah, he bowled 250 the last game. Correct. He's been around the pocket this game. He's got the one mishap there with missing the 10 pin, but I mean, he's bowled outstanding. Well, if you look at the scoreboard, you look at the math, Landon Jordan's going to be your 2015 U15 boys champion. 2015? 2021 <laughs> U15. And we're reliving the 80s. <laughs> it's, a, it's been a long day. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like some of my coffee? <laughs> I think this, this this is a this is a good broadcast for back then. Oh my god. We're setting new new standards we're, here. We're just all over the place here oh. today. Holy Welcome cow. Welcome to the 1998 Junior Gold Championships. <laughs> I'm actually competing and commentating actually. Oh boy. It's all right. We're good. That's not the winning good. call yet. I'll get you that one yeah, in a minute. We're good. Great week for Trevor. Well, Trevor Ashby, I'm sure, dominates his events up in his neck of the woods. Billy Gasson. He's smiling. Feels good about his performance. But right now, it's Landon Jordan's moment. You hear the crowd sending him off here into the 10th frame. Still got a big score left, too. He was your number one seed coming in to the bracket play. He deserves to win this event. It's been absolutely lights out throughout the entire 2021 Junior Gold Championships here in Indianapolis. Max Gore, 259. Made the right call on switching balls. Going to be in the 240s, 14 years old. 
He now can add the biggest title of his young career to his trophy case. Landon's going to pick up his trophy here. And in just a moment, Carolyn Doran Ballard's going to talk to him. Mom, Christina, Dad, Anthony, twin brother, Griffin, Rylan, his sister. What a great moment for the Jordan family. I am here with Landon Jordan. You are U15, a boys champion. Phenomenal bowling. I know it went two matches. I loved the game plan. The left lane's been giving everyone trouble. Tell us how you came up with plastic on the left lane, urethane on the right, and then tell us about the change. Um, just plastic was what worked in practice when we were on the practice pair, and I had a great look up the gutter. And then when the right lane started getting a little tighter, I just switched to something that hooked a little more and it was able to work. What were you thinking after the first game? When you switched in the 10th frame, you went high flush, high flush, high flush. Now your first shot in the game was a little off, we'll just say, but you made the spare. What were you thinking? Just make better shots and just make the spare. And then from here on out, just ace every shot. Okay, so we want to know how this fits into your trophy case because you have 20 elite tour championships, which is a ridiculous number, I might add. Phenomenal. How does this measure up? Uh, this one just goes on the mantle in the living room, and it's going to be the number one trophy up there. <laughs> I love it. Like, it's no big deal. I have 20 titles over there, and I got this one now, too. So what are some of the goals you have for yourself as you progress in your bowling career? I'm um, just make it on tour and win some titles, win some majors, and just be the best bowler I possibly can be. I love it. Look at that confidence. And he sure did show that today. Congratulations and the best of luck to you. Back to you, Mike. Thank you, Carolyn. I am now standing by with your runner up finisher. Trevor Ashby here in the booth. Trevor, you had a really good look on the lanes and a pretty nice performance out there. How would you sum up your performance today? I, I would consider it pretty good. It, it, the last game there, it was, the left lane got a little tricky on me. It started hooking early, switched in the 10th frame. I moved a little bit left and went high on me, so I moved back right. And you know what? <laughs> what a week, man. What a week. Yeah, a great week, a great performance out there. I mean, you went 2-1 and one on the TV show. You, you bowled 250 out there. But you really had a plan, and you stuck with it with the urethane ball. Yeah, I did. I, I tried reactive in practice, but I just it kept jumping on me. And the urethane, I thought, had the most controlled motion. So stuck with it, played it up the right side, and I consider it a success. Yeah, you, you seem to get pretty comfortable out there. You had a little bit of miss room. Occasionally we'd see your timing be just a little bit off, maybe a little quick with your feet. But then the urethane ball, you just kind of tug it in the middle of the lane, maybe not hit it as much, and it just kind of held pocket for you. You created a little room out there. Yeah, the carry down for the urethane helped just a little bit. And, you know, urethane likes to hook in the fronts for me. So, you know what, sometimes if you hit up on it a little bit and just goes through the nose. But, you know what, great week. I love it. 
let's talk about your opponent a little bit there in the championship match, Landon. Uh, you know, he's using plastic. You know, did, did that weigh into your thoughts at all about maybe carrying even more oil down the lane to where maybe your ball couldn't make it around the corner? Not really, because uh, I was playing a little bit further left than he was, and the plastic ball, it it was pretty controlled motion for him. He could just play it right up the lane, and it would hit the pocket pretty consistently. And the thing that surprised me was whenever he switched on the right lane. That did surprise me a little bit, and you know what? It worked out for him. Happy yeah, for him. You had to probably think in, in the second frame, though, when he missed the head pin left. I don't know if you watch your opponent's pull, but he missed the head pin to the left that, oh, wow, you know, he had met, he struck every single time on the right lane, and then, uh-oh, maybe it isn't that perfect. Yeah, it was definitely, it definitely surprised me a lot because somebody like Landon, he, I don't expect that to happen. And mm -hmm. you know what? It, he rebounded real nice and finished out the game very, very nicely. Well, we know you had some support here, and we know that your game hasn't gotten to where it is without some help. So this is your opportunity to tell the folks at home. If there's anybody you want to give a shout-out to, you, you can do that now. Yeah. Thank you to everyone at home because it's been such a long ride, a grind, and I'm exhausted. I just want to get back home. <laughs> Saw your mom here. Home. She was yelling out things to you, pre-shot routine, I think she said one time to you. Yeah, that's something that we've been working on for the coaching. And because I tend to get a little fast and the adrenaline on, on the TV pair, I was able to handle the nerves way better than I thought. But you know what? I call it a victory. We'll see you back at Junior Gold in the future? Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, we're we'll looking forward to Rapids. that very much. It was a pleasure watching you bowl today. Pleasure spending a little bit of time with you. That's Thank it. Uh, here from Trevor Ashby. Thanks for spending a few minutes with me. Thank you. Well, with that, We've got another telecast in the books here, folks. Hope you enjoyed that one. I know I certainly did here from Indianapolis. 2021 Junior Gold Championships, the U15 division. Boy, that was a good one, both on the girls' side and the boys' side. You know, we certainly do appreciate you watching our broadcast here on Bowl TV. Bowling certainly does live here, and it lives here a lot. There's a lot of events throughout the year here on Bowl TV, and thanks for being a subscriber. And if you're watching a post-broadcast, make sure you subscribe to Bowl TV so you can watch all the action live. This broadcast would not be possible here from Expo Bowl without a lot of people and a lot of organizations and a lot of sponsors. So at this time, I'm going to try to thank them all. BPAA and the BPAA board couldn't do it without you guys. The USBC, the USBC board couldn't do it without you as well. Ken Keegan, Kathy Keegan, they're on hand here from Logo Infusion. They have their I Am brand powered by Logo Infusion. Great sponsor of this event. Kegel on hand to oil the lanes, the official lane maintenance supplier of the Junior Gold Championships. And USBC also would like to thank you, the fans, the Bowl TV community. want to thank our great partners, our ball manufacturers, Motive, Brunswick, Storm, and Rotogrip. We also want to thank the athletes for providing such great competition out on the lanes and of course i like to throw in there as well i'd like to thank everyone here at expo bowl everyone at all the centers that helped put on junior gold here this week in indianapolis we happen to be at expo now we've had a lot of competition a lot of other centers lots of bowling here on bowl tv so that's going to do it for carolyn doran ballard my broadcast partner mike flanagan our entire production team we'll see you next time here on bowl tv remember on bowl tv bowling lives here